I know y'all don't know, you know, we don't, we talk about Paul before Paul uh, was Paul. Well, we talk about Paul after Paul had been turned into Paul. But before he was Paul, he was Saul. Because if you know the, the story, God changed his name. So before his name was changed, he was Saul and he was persecuting the church. He was persecuting the people that he believed were blasphemers of God. They were out there committing blasphemy. They was taking the Lord's name in vain and, and they was doubting God's good intention and they was damaging the church and they was worshiping the devil. Uh, they was doing all those things. He was on a quest to get all of them. He was saying to all of them, I got y'all. You know, I had taught y'all like y'all hood because I got some gang members in my church. <laughs> uh, he said, I'm coming to get y'all. On his way to Damascus, he experiences a light that causes him to be temporarily blind. Are y'all following me? So he's blind and he hears the voice of the Lord and they have a little conversation. Uh, the conversation goes like this. Saul, why do you persecute me? Saul responds, who are you, Lord? He asks a question, which indicates to me that he recognized a divine presence. He knew that somebody was talking, but he didn't know who. And then Jesus responds and says, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Then he tells him, now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The Bible says Saul got up, but when he tried to open his eyes, he couldn't see. So the people that were with him grabbed him by the hand and led him into Damascus. For three days he was blind. For three days he did not eat or drink anything. So in Damascus, Saul, and I need you to catch this in the Holy Ghost, begins to recover from the shock that he had been persecuting the very God he thought he was serving. And the reason why I need you to get that is because many of us are guilty of doing the same thing. We find ourselves persecuting the very God that we should be serving. Saul was very confused and in a place of darkness. For three days he was blind. For three days he didn't eat. For three days he didn't drink. For three days he was left to consider what kind of life he had lived. And after three days he was still blind. Still not eating and still not drinking. And then what happens? The Bible says a man named Ananias shows up. First of all, who is Ananias? Who is Ananias? Luke, the author of Acts, gives us an answer. He says he's a disciple. We don't know if Ananias had any special education or training. We don't know if he was young or old. We don't know what he did for a living. We don't know who his people was. We have no idea whether he was a great man or a small man in his community. All we know is that he was a disciple. And the Lord says, Ananias, and then he answers. I think that is very relevant in this season because you've got to know God always has a plan, but he needs the people to carry it out. Uh-huh, church, I need you to show up with me. When God wants to do something new, he starts with a person. When God wants to do something new, he starts with a disciple. When God wants to bless a whole nation, he starts with a person. It's three things you got to understand from this text, and then we all going to go home together. The first thing is you've got to understand time. Everybody say time. When God gets ready to enact a plan from heaven to earth, he looks for a person who can handle what he's getting ready to do, who can focus on what he's doing, and at the right place at the right time. He's listening, looking for somebody who's listening. He's looking for somebody who is willing. He's looking for somebody that he can trust. He's looking for Abraham. He's looking for David. He's looking for Esther. He's looking for a Ruth. He's looking for a me. He's looking for a you. He's looking for a disciple, a follower who can focus. That's why it's important this season that you fix your focus. Because if you can't fix your focus, you may forfeit your future. I need you to get that. If you cannot fix your focus, you may forfeit your future. 
See, we've got to cultivate the kind of relationship with God that allows us to be focused enough to hear his voice and trust it even when the job is risky. Lisa, Marcus, there is an assignment for you in Anniston, Alabama. You ain't got no family there. You ain't got no people that you congregate with all the time in Anniston. But there's a job for you to do at the Life City Anderson. Is the people going to like us? Or the people might not. Is the people going to receive us? The people might not. But in this season, you cannot forfeit your future trying to do things that are comfortable for you. You've got to fix your focus and trust your relationship with God to know when time is just the time. And if you want to be a church that's used by God, you got to be a church that God can use. Ooh, y'all ain't talking to me loud enough this morning. You've got to be a church that God can use. See, what's wrong is we've got to learn how to build our history with God. Uh, you ever heard somebody, you ever seen a, a, a dude and a female out and, they, and, then, and then the girl's talking and she said, you know, we got history. We got history. We got history mean we've been through something together. And when I think about history, I think about David who said in 37 and 12, uh, Psalms 37 and 25, he said, I was young, but now I'm old. He said, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken or the seeds begging bread. In other words, he was saying, I got history with God and I know that he's going to show up. Because one day, God is going to be ready to do something new and he's going to speak your name. He's going to say, Brandon. He's going to say, uh, uh, BJ. He's going to say, Adora. He's going to say, AB. He's going to say, uh, 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 Makita. And you've got to be ready and focused to do what God is calling you to do. Think about it. Let me ask you a question. What can a scalpel do? The answer is nothing unless it's in the hands of a surgeon. Jesus said to Ananias, Saul is my chosen instrument. Saul was a chosen instrument, but I think we can uh, see in this text that Ananias was chosen as well. In other words, when you're in God's hands, you can do God's work. Are you with me? The Bible says in 1 Peter 2 and 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. He used the word instrument. I think that's a good word because instrument, it, it means the means of by which a particular task gets done. And what I love and the reason why I reference the scalpel is a scalpel, when you put it in the hands of a surgeon uh, in an operating room, it does things uh, that it cannot do by itself. Um, and the operation cannot be done without the scalpel. There's many other instruments that he has to use, but he needs that scalpel. And even more profound, catch this in the Holy Ghost, the instrument is useless without an ex expert. It's useless without the experts. So here is Ananias is a regular disciple that Jesus has given a revelation, a prophecy, and permission to impart in Saul's life. So it was a good time. The second thing I need y'all to say it after me, say trust. Uh, Ananias heard the voice of God and the Bible says he had a vision. When, when God called Ananias, Ananias responded and said, here I am, Lord. In other words, that said to me, Ananias was saying, I'm available. Many of us are willing and we want to be used by God. We want to do the work of God, but really we're unavailable. I know y'all don't want to talk about it. We struggle with being available. And the reason why we struggle with being available is because we have no faith. There is that word again. We have no faith. We, not only do we have no faith, but we are not faithful. Ooh, just say ouch. We sh Listen, it's tight, but it's right. We struggle with being available because we have no faith. And then we have no faith because we're not faithful. The primary cause of the lack of faith is because a lot of us really don't have a relationship with God. Uh, I 
know people don't want to talk about relationships with God in church because you think your relationship mean when you walk in here on Sunday morning and you lift your hands up or, or you check on us on the, on the, on the uh, Facebook live. That make you think that you got a relationship. But relationship requires two things, agreement and commitment. Uh, I married Marcus, but I couldn't have married him and he don't marry me. <laughs> I know some of these women out here, they got these imaginary men. I have, you know, me and him been together. Y'all ever watched the Parkers? Nicky Parker had an a ongoing relationship with Professor Ogilvy that he never even acknowledged. She talking about my boo. She fighting women and beating up folk and everything. And it was a one-sided relationship. It was not a relationship because you can't be with nobody that ain't with you. Let me help somebody. Let me help somebody. I know, we, I know we do it all the time. That's the reason why, and I'm going to just say this. This ain't got nothing to do with the text. But I do a lot of women's empowerment, and I speak to women all the time. So you got to learn what you're worth. Because a lot of times you be chasing people that say, I don't want to be with you. Well, you ought to be saying, I don't want to be with you either. Stop trying to be with folk that don't want you. Relationships require agreement. If he said, I don't want to be with you, then you both say, I don't want to be with you either. relationships, the good thing about your relationship with God is God wants you. He wants to have a relationship with you. And you have to agree with him. And then when you get a relationship and you understand the agreement and the commitment, then you've got to have that word that's a two-way street and the word is trust. You've got to know that God can trust you and then you've got to trust him. Are you with me this morning? If you can trust God, then you won't have a struggle with staying focused. If you can really trust God, then you won't have to worry about uh, 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 being distracted and being, and being uh, 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 out of whack when things in your life don't go like you want them to go. See, we have a one-sided trust relationship, uh, and God can only trust us when everything is going good. God can only trust us when we got money in the bank. God can only trust us for real uh, when, when our boo thing ain't acting up. But can he trust you when everything is falling apart? Ananias was focused with his commitment and his trust. Uh, and it began to illustrate God's purpose. See, when we focus on what God is saying, commit to him and trust him, then he can start to fulfill the purpose in our life. Uh, I believe there is purpose because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1 and 29, but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. I believe that God has something for you. He has purpose for your life. He has blessings for you, but you've got to understand time, trust, and focus. You got to be focused at the right time and you got to trust God. The third thing of my little Easter speech and I'm out of here. You got to have time, trust, and you got to have tenacity. Y'all know I love words. If you don't know by now, I always, you know, I have litany with words. I just, I like words. <laughs> don't laugh at me, Cece. And Ananias had tenacity. And Ananias knew this man's reputation. The city was buzzing. People were talking about what Saul was doing. Saul was going around killing people, destroying people because they were blas blasphemers of God. He tells Ananias, I need you to go to this man. I need you to pray for him and I need you to baptize him. He obeys God goes to find Saul. He lays his hands on him and he prays. He says, brother Saul, I'm finna close here. The Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road that we were coming in has sent me to you that ye may see again. I need to tell you something today. God is sometimes going to call you to do some things that is going to scare you. God is going to call you to do some things that is going to make you afraid. You're going to sometimes say to yourself, oh, I can't do that. 
Oh, no, I, I, it's too difficult for me. It's too dangerous. I, I, I just can't do it. I can imagine that Ananias had this same human reaction. He was nervous and hesitant because Saul was a persecutor and a murderer. And he was meant to go and speak, but Ananias was reluctant. Because check this out. Ananias was just a regular man. He was not an apostle. He was not a prophet. He was not a pastor. He was not an evangelist. He was not an elder. He was not a deacon, yet God used him anyway. He, he didn't have to have a title. Oh, if some of y'all catch this, you're going to shout with me. He didn't have to have a title. All he needed was what God said. Because if you got what God said, then God is going to help you do what needs to be done. See, sometimes you don't need the title. You just need what God said. You just need to hear what God is saying in this season. And that was all he had. See, tenacity means courage. And since he had courage and tenacity, God reassured him. Let me tell you what God is going to do in this season of your life. If you follow him and you listen to him, even if you're nervous and apprehensive, if you're hesitant, God will give you a vision and he'll be specific. Check this out. God told him a specific street. Uh, he said the street is called straight. He said a specific house, the house of Judas. He said a specific man, a one called Saul from Tarsus, a specific thing. He said the man is going to be praying. He said a specific vision. He said in his vision, he saw a man named Ananias. I'm trying to tell you that if you need confirmation in this season, you've got to know that when God got something for you to do, he's going to tell you exactly what to do. He's going to tell you exactly who's getting ready to bless you. He's going to tell you exactly who's going to put the check in your hand. God is not going to send you on a wild goose chase. See, God, God don't send nobody on a wild goose chase. Even when he told Abraham, go to a land which I will show you. Abraham just started moving and he happened to show up in the right place. See, you got to know when God tells you to do something, he's got a plan for what he's telling you to do. And if you need confirmation, he's going to guide you. He said, I'll send you the Holy Ghost. And that Holy Ghost is there to comfort you. It's going to tell you what all you need to do. It's going to lead you and guide you and bring things to your remembrance that you didn't even know. He might not have had a title. He might not have had weapons in an army. He going to work and he going to speak life over a murderer. He didn't even have any weapons. He didn't even have any special training. All he had was a word. Good God Almighty. I, I'm going to get about five of y'all to shout this morning. You don't need a weapon in this season. You don't need no army in this season. All you need is a word. <laughs> I look at somebody and say, all I need is a word. That's to shout. You may not have a degree. You may not have accolades. You may not have an entourage. You may just be an ordinary disciple. But if you got what you heard from God, that's all you need. You need time. You need trust. And you need tenacity. Look at somebody and tell them, say, I need time. I need trust. And I need tenacity. And as Ananias' tenacity enabled God to set up a divine appointment for him. Come here, Ananias. You got to have some tenacity to hunt down a murderer and give them a word for the Lord and pray even for their healing. Come here, Esther. You got to have tenacity in order to get to some people and say, Go gather together all the Jews of Susa and fast for me. She said, do not eat and do not drink for three days, for three nights. She said, me and my attendants will fast like you. And when the fast is done, I will go to the king even against the law. You got to have some tenacity to say, if I perish, let me perish. See, some of y'all too scared to stand on the word of God. But I'm 
trying to tell you uh, that all you need uh, in this season uh, is a word from God. All you need uh, in this season uh, is the right time. Uh, trust in God uh, and a little bit of tenacity. Come here, Paul. After he went through uh, all that he went through uh, around 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter and the seventh verse, uh, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Uh, and henceforth uh, is laid up for me uh, a crown of righteousness, uh, which the Lord, uh, the righteous judge, uh, shall give me. Uh, day uh, not to me only um, but all of them um, that love his appearing uh, I need somebody to come here let's talk about February of 2022 uh, the Russian president uh, launched a military operation over in Ukraine uh, they had to have uh, a little tenacity uh, to stay over there um, while a whole invasion uh, was going on. Uh, come here Jesus. Uh, let's talk about tenacity. They whipped him all night long. Um, pierced his side. Uh, thorns on his head. Uh, he had enough tenacity uh, to cry out uh, in a loud voice. Uh, Father, in your hands uh, I commit my spirit. Uh, I'm trying to tell you uh, that if you're going to work for God, uh, if you're going to live for God, uh, you ain't got to be a pastor. You ain't got to be a preacher. You ain't got to be an elder. You ain't got to be a deacon. Uh, all he needs uh, is an ordinary disciple uh, to do what he said when he says to it. Uh, and God uh, is going to set up uh, divine assignment just for you at the right time if you trust him have tenacity you're getting ready to do something that ain't never been done tell your neighbor all I need is a word getting out of here this morning but in this season in order to follow what Jesus has for you you got to understand time trust and tenacity when I was a little girl they used to sing a song said I have decided to follow Jesus <laughs> they say no turning back the world behind me and the cross before me but no turning back uh, though nobody will go uh, go with me uh, I still follow Jesus uh, no turning back uh, my cross uh, I carry uh, until I see Jesus uh, no turning back uh, will you decide this morning uh, to follow Jesus, uh, no turning back. If you're gonna follow Jesus, uh, if you're gonna wait on your time, uh, if you're gonna trust God, uh, if you're gonna have a little tenacity, uh, lift up your hands uh, and wave them uh, from side to side. Uh, wave your hand, uh, wave them in the air, wave them uh, like you just don't care. If you know uh, that in this season uh, you got to do uh, what God said do, uh, I need you, uh, I'm pulling on you, uh, I need you, uh, I need you, uh, I need you uh, to lift your hand uh, and say, Father, send me, Lord, uh, I'll go for you, I'll go for you. You can use me. I'm available. I want to live so you can use me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody may be struggling.
dwelling with following God. I know I done tapped into my Baptist roots. But there's a story about a little girl that walked every day to the store with her daddy. And every day when she walked to the store, it only took three blocks to get to where they were going. And she walked every day with her daddy. And every day on the way to the store, she would pass a yellow house with a woman working in the garden. She would get to the next block and she would pass a dry cleaners with a man sitting outside the store. And by the time she made it to the next block, they were at the store after so many times. One time came along and daddy said, I can't go today. He told the daughter, you gonna have to go to the store by yourself. He said, all I need you to do is remember the way we go. He looked at it and said, do you remember how to get to the store? She said, daddy, I remember. I got to pass the yellow house with the lady working in the garden. She said, daddy, I got to pass the dry cleaners with the man sitting outside the store. And he said, uh, what happens next? She said, at the next place, I'll be at the store. He said, well, baby, go on to the store and get what I need you to get and hurry up and come back home. She started walking and she passed the yellow house with the lady in the garden. She kept on walking and passed the dry cleaners with the man sitting outside the door. She went down in another block she made it to the store she got a bag and she got ready to walk out well she started walking and she made it to the dry cleaners and she realized that she was real hot well the man sitting outside the store gave her a bottle of water and she started to drink and she kept on walking Kareem. she made in, uh, to the yellow house with the lady working outside in the garden uh, and guess what it started to rain uh, the lady reached over and gave her an umbrella and she kept on walking uh, and the next block she made it home to daddy he said baby how was your walk to the store she said well let me tell you daddy it got hard for me daddy because when I walked out. It got too hot for me to bear. And she gave, he gave me some water. And she said, he said, what did you keep doing? She said, I kept on walking. And when I made it to the woman at the yellow house, she gave me an umbrella because it started to rain. He said, what you do next? He said, I kept on walking. And I finally made it home. He said, did you learn anything? What happened? She said, Daddy, somebody provided everything I needed uh, while I was walking. Uh, he looked at her and said, Daddy, I knew it was going to rain, uh, so I sent you an umbrella. He said, I knew, uh, I knew uh, it was going to get too hot, uh, so I sent you a bottle of water. What I'm trying to tell somebody is, if you do what the Lord uh, tells you to do, uh, he'll make a way. Uh, he'll provide uh, everything you need. Uh, tell somebody, God, at the right time, um, if you trust him uh, and have a little courage, uh, everything, uh, Somebody lift your hands and say everything. It's going to be all right. Every hand lifted all over this place. I never seen this young man a day in my life, but the Lord just told me to tell you. 
that you're pressed to come in here today after your relationship with church was not by accident. Everybody point your hand in this direction. I'm not trying to embarrass you. Awesome. Point your hand in this direction. I just want to pray that God would give you strength. That your relationship with him would be strengthened like never before. And God will give you the courage to do whatever it is he's telling you to do. I need everybody to stretch. And when I count to three, I just, I need everybody to shout, it is so. One, two, three, it is so. Now I need you to praise God for him. I don't have to touch him. I ain't got to get, all I need is the word to go to him. Because the word can do the work that I can't do. The word can heal when I can't do it. The word can save, not Lisa. If you want to live so God can use you, then you've got to understand time, trust, and tenacity. Most of all, you've got to focus. Everybody, hands lifted all over this place. If you need prayer, or even now the doors of the church is open. If you would desire to become a member of this church, now is your time. You can come. I know we get out of the custom of doing church stuff. But some of this stuff we need to bring back. Walk. Come. If you desire to be a member of this church, we are a growing church. We are in, in the position of creating a culture of family. We are a family at this church. Some people just need a family. We are your brothers, your sisters. We are your family. If you feel like you need a family, then I want you to come. We're not trying to embarrass you. We just want you to make a declaration that you want to be a part of the family. The TLC Church family. You want to come? Yes. You want to come for prayer? You can come. Don't be nervous. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Church is the only place that we go. When you go to the casino, you, you go quickly and stick your quarters in that slot and pull that thing down. You don't be shamed. When you go to the library, when you go... Whatever it is that you're going to do, you don't have no trouble. The only, only place that we get shame is at church. If you want to give your life to Christ, you can come now. If you need prayer, you can come. If you're out of your walk with God, maybe you're already saved. Maybe you already have Jesus as your Savior. But, you know, you just say, well, I just I done made some mistakes and I just want to recommit my life to God. You can come. I'm not going to tarry, but I'm not going to rush every hand lifted all over this place. I keep saying if we come in here Sunday after Sunday and we leave the same way we came, and if we come and nobody says, I want to be saved, then we're, we're not doing what we're supposed to do. Because this is about building up God's kingdom. So if nothing else, just lift your hands as Pastor Marcus begins to pray for those who came for prayer. Our Father in heaven, God, we come now to say thank you. We thank you, God, just for being God. God, we thank you for who you are, God. We know that you sit high and you look down low. We know that you see and that you know all. God, we understand that every issue we have, every flaw, every concern, God, you already know, God. So we come now asking you to have your way in our lives, God. Pray now that you bless our families, God, that you keep our minds stayed on you, God. Whatever it is, God, we give it to you right now in the name of Jesus, God. Anyone that may be here and even on the live, God, whatever it is that they're going through, God, we know that you are able, God. You see, the Bible says that you are a just, God, that if we confess our sins, that you're able to forgive us of them all and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God, we ask you to search us now there's anything in us that should not be God, we ask that you remove it right now in the name of Jesus.
God, we decree and we declare uh, peace in this room, peace of mind, God. We declare healing, God. We declare favor over the lives of, of our people, over the lives of your people, God, our children, God. God, we pray that you bless everyone under the sound of my voice. God, I don't know, but I know that you know, God. Whatever the need is, God, I believe that you know, God. And I believe that you could change the entire situation right now, God. Help us to trust and believe, God. Help us to trust you, God. We thank you now for this, your woman of God who's come this morning, God. We give you glory and honor and praise for her this morning, God. We pray now that her life will never be the same again. God, we know that she's made a decision to come forth this morning, and we believe that you're going to honor her decision today, God. And we claim victory in her life, God. We claim victory over everyone that's connected to her, God. We pray now that when she leaves, God, the world, even today, will see the change. We thank you now for the change in all of us, God. We thank you now, God, for increasing our faith, God. We thank you now, God, for, for bettering our relationship with you, God. We claim now that healing will go on in fa families, God, that they will come back together again, God. We pray that you strengthen our families, God. We understand that if you strengthen the family, God, that you'll strengthen the church. We need your power in these last and even days, God. So we come now saying thank you. We thank you for doing just what you said. We thank you for giving us everything we need, God, to go forward and live a life that's pleasing to you, God. We just want to hear you say, well done, God. We're living every day, God, to live again because we understand that death is not the end, that we must have a place to go when we leave this world, God. And God, we want to live with you forevermore. Help us, God. Help us to be the people, the Christians, the believers, the body of faith walkers that you've called us to be, God. Help us to be the mothers, the fathers, the parents that you've called us to be in these times, God. And we thank you for it now. And we claim it done. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank God. Oh, it's giving time. Come on, all over this place. Clap your hands. We celebrate giving. We celebrate giving. So as we get the baskets and we get ready there, I'm going to sing this little quartet song. Say, I want to live so God can use you anywhere, Lord, at any time. virtual space you got your given I want to live so God can use me
Father, we thank you for these gifts that were given. We thank you for the givers that had it and those that had a desire to give. God, we thank you for every virtual seed that was sowed. We ask that you would bless it. God, for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, we're going to drive out of here. Look at somebody and say, use me, Lord. Say, use me, Lord. See you next time. Whoa!